In this Circuits of the Past video, Herman shows you footage of the two tours he made through the southwest of the United States of America. During these two tours, he visited several operational and lost racetracks. Laguna Seca Raceway We start at the Laguna Seca Circuit near Monterey, California. This permanent road circuit was opened in 1958 and has a length of just 1.9 miles. Because this was too short for international races, the track was extended in 1988 to 2.2 miles in length. They built a new section between Turn 2 and Turn 3, and that made the old Turn 3 become Turn 5. The Laguna Seca circuit is probably best known for its IndyCar and Champ Car races, as well as the MotoGP events it holds. But did you know it also holds sport car races? When the track opened, it was named the Laguna Seca Raceway, but through the years it's had different names, like Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, and the most recent name, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. On May the 5th, 2014, when Herman visited the circuit, it was still sponsored by Mazda. As he parked his rental car, he walked along the track and on his way towards the famous corkscrew. The corkscrew is the most famous corner of Laguna Seca. Actually, it's a chicane, but not an ordinary one. The corkscrew starts at the top of a hillock, then goes left-right in a 95-foot drop. That's 18 metres for us Europeans. Perhaps one day, though, drivers on GT Sport might actually take the corner properly. Not everyone's got Zanardi's talent. Riverside International Raceway The Riverside International Raceway was a 3.3 mile long road circuit which was operational from 1957 through to 1989. In 1960 it hosted the Formula 1 US Grand Prix which was won by Sir Sterling Moss. Aside from that single Formula 1 race, it was often used for NASCAR. However, in 1983, the racetrack was bought by a new owner. He sold the property on in 1988 to a new developer who wanted to build a shopping centre on the location instead. Perhaps after seeing a few wrecked cars handling like shopping trolleys, he was inspired. When Herman visited the site in 2012, there was absolutely nothing left of the Riverside International Raceway. It's forever lost in time. Phoenix International Raceway The day after he visited Riverside, Herman drove from Palm Springs to Phoenix, probably creating a Joshua Tree rally on the way. There he made a stop at the Phoenix International Raceway. The Phoenix International Raceway is a one mile oval that opened in 1964. The track is most known for IndyCar races and of course for NASCAR. The 1992 F1 champion Nigel Mansell should have made his oval debut here in IndyCar, but after a huge shunt in practice, the medics didn't give him permission to start in the race. When Herman arrived, immediately a security guard came to him and asked him what he wanted to do. Herman told him he was a motorsport fan and just wanted to have a look on the racetrack during his journey. The security guard let him sign a waiver, open the gate and let Herman take some pictures of the track. I wonder what that waiver covered. No hot dogs on the racing line? Caesars Palace Grand Prix Circuit Here on the site of the Caesars Palace Hotel and Casino, on the famous Las Vegas Strip, a Formula One Grand Prix was held in 1981 and 1982. It was on a 2.268 mile temporary circuit on the Caesars Palace parking lot. Actually, sadly, the circuit had a boring layout full of restrictive and repetitive hairpins and kinks. If you thought Valencia was bad, this was the joker in the pack of poor circuits. After Formula One, the circuit was used for kart series for the next two years, then it closed down forever. Today, there's nothing that refers to the old Caesars Palace Grand Prix circuit. Herman filmed this footage in 2014. After the filming, he walked back to the strip but there was a confused man who was probably very upset at the fact that Herman had been filming the fountains. When Herman passed him by, he showed his anger by saying, what the beep? <laughs> Herman decided to ignore this lunatic and went on his way. Maybe the waiver form was for here instead. Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The day after his visit to the Caesars Palace Grand Prix circuit and the encounter with Mad Max, as we shall call him, 
Herman visited the operational Las Vegas Motor Speedway. That day there was a Richard Petty driving experience on the Oval, where participants could ride as a passenger in a NASCAR. While you enjoy the footage, I'll give you some more information about the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The Las Vegas Motor Speedway is a huge circuit complex northeast of Las Vegas. It started in 1972 with a drag strip and a road course. It was built to replace the closed Stardust International Raceway. Through the years, the motorsport complex was extended, and in 1996, the 1 1.5 mile oval opened. Today, this oval is well known for IndyCar and NASCAR races. It's also known as the track where Indy 500 winner Dan Weldon lost his life. Here you see the road circuit on the infield. If you pay a lot of dollars, you can drive a Ferrari here. And if that sounds fun, we recommend you come here first before you go to the Las Vegas Strip. In the afternoon, Herman participated in a guided tour around the huge motorsport complex. Next to the 1.5 mile oval there is still a drag strip, several road circuits and several small little ovals. At the end of the tour, they showed the guests the VIP room, where you have a great view over the whole oval. The Ontario Motor Speedway was a copy of the famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Therefore, it was nicknamed the Indianapolis of the West. However, there were a few key differences with the original Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The Ontario Motor Speedway was a little bit wider, and the two short straights between turns 1 and 2, and between turns 3 and 4, were also banked. That made the Ontario Motor Speedway even faster than the original. Inside the oval there was also a road course, which made the track suitable for all different types of motorsport to be held there. The Ontario Motor Speedway opened in August of 1970, and hosted several open wheeled races and stock car races too. The last race though was in December of 1980. After that the track was closed because of financial difficulties. The track was then purchased for real estate development, and the track itself was demolished in 1981. On this empty field, you can recognise the embankment of Turn 3. Sadly though, that is literally all that's left of the Ontario Motor Speedway. Long Beach. The street circuit of Long Beach was used for the first time in 1975. Today it's best known for the IndyCar Toyota Grand Prix, but from 1976 through to 1983 it was also the scene of Formula One Grand Prix too. In front you can see a bridge that looks like a roller coaster. Actually, when Herman watched the IndyCar races on TV, he actually thought it was a roller coaster, but the bridge is a remembrance to Luna Park's The Pike which was here a long, long time ago. In 1980, Dutchman Jan Lammers qualified fourth for the Formula One United States Grand Prix West here at Long Beach. It would be the best starting position for a Dutchman for more than 30 years. Sadly, there's no prizes for guessing who eclipsed that record. Over the years, the layout of the Long Beach circuit has changed several times. However, what has always remained the same is the Shoreline Drive, which has always been a part of the circuit layout in all its current versions. This section of the Long Beach circuit runs over a parking lot.
And here in the hairpin, that's where they store the concrete walls for the rest of the circuit. You can find more information about the circuits in this video on the website www.circuitsofthepast.com. There you can also download a free ebook about seven abandoned race circuits that you can visit legally. So that's it for Herman's two visits to the southwest of the USA to date. What recommendations would you give to our international man of mystery if he was to go again? Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video for another circuit of the past, and perhaps from the present too.